Kevin Durant just can't stay away from a super team. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bradley Beal is a Phoenix Sun. I feel like throughout this entire process of, you know, it's finally seeming like, you know, the Wizards are ready to move on from Bradley Beal. Obviously, with the no trade clause in his contract, he had a lot of, not a lot of, he did have the final say so <clears throat> um, in terms of where he would get traded to. Um, and it came out kind of late. There's a lot more teams that were speculated outside of Phoenix that seemed like more realistic destinations just based on the reports. Um, one of the biggest of those being Miami, but even, you know, teams like Milwaukee being mentioned there as well. Um, and, and it came out kind of late that Phoenix and Miami were the, the final two finalists there. Um, and, and shortly after that, Phoenix was able to, to close the deal. Um, the trade is technically not officially done because um, I believe they're still trying to find a way uh, potentially to maybe involve a third team to move Chris Paul again, essentially. Um, but for all intents and purposes, um, the, the details of the trade, obviously the, the, the Suns are getting Bradley Beal um, and the Wizards are getting back Chris Paul, Landry Shamit, several second round picks and pick swaps as well. Um, the Suns will be also be getting guard Jordan Goodwin and forward Isaiah Todd as well. Um, so all that out of the way, um, just your initial reaction to the trade and the new big three in Phoenix of Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal. Well, if I'm being honest, when I first seen the trade, um, my initial thought is that's a lot of firepower, obviously. Like, just if we're just talking about it from a talent perspective, that is a lot of firepower. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of scoring for the Phoenix Suns. But when I, when I think about it, it's like, is that what they really needed? You know what I mean? Like they had, I, in my opinion, they had enough firepower. They had enough scoring between Devin Booker and KD in its own. So that, to the point where they didn't really need Bradley Beal. So that that part of it was a little confusing. Um, If I'm talking about the actual trade itself, like set aside the fit and everything, the trade itself is a, is a good trade for the Suns. If we're just talking about what did you get? What did you give up? They were going to cut Chris Paul anyway, if we're being honest. So mm -hmm. it's like, you replace him and Landry Shamit with a uh, a guy that's capable of scoring 30 points every single night. So, I mean, from the trade itself, it's a good trade, but I just think that, to me, it doesn't address any of the problems that you had going into the offseason. And the fact that we just watched the Denver Nuggets with just two stars and a quality team around them win a championship and pretty much dominate their way through the, final, through the, the whole postseason, and you still make this move is a little bit confusing to me. So that part I don't really get um, from the Wizards side of it, man, the, Wiz to me, the Wizards are the definition of a poverty franchise, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> like, and it's not even the fact that you you trade him now. Um, I, I, I understand his value isn't going to be that high because he has a no trade clause. The contract isn't that good. And he, he pretty much can choose wherever he wants. So it's like you're not going to get the best deal on the table if he doesn't want to go there. But. You should have traded Bradley Beal years ago, in my opinion. Like, extending him was a mistake. Giving him a no-trade clause is ridiculous, in my opinion. Like, I feel like the, 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 there's people talking about it now. There's, I feel like there's only a couple guys in the league that should have a no-trade clause, and Bradley Beal is not one of those guys, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But you should have traded Bradley Beal years ago. Like, the writing has been on the wall. You've been trying to put a Band-Aid over your, your, your actual problem. You've been trying to stop. You've been trying to not go into the rebuild when – you should have started rebuilding years ago. So to me, in my opinion, the Wizards, this definition of a poverty franchise, that was an insane move. But as far, like I said, as far as the Suns, I just, I, I just don't feel like it addressed any of the problems that they had going into this offseason. And it's made it way harder for them to address those problems now with this Bradley Beal trade. Yeah. Um, I agree with pretty much everything you said, right? Same, same exact sentiment. When you see the trade initially, Wow, it's a lot of firepower. Just, again, three guys who are capable of going off for 30-plus points regularly on a night-in, night-out basis. Great. Going – even going back to this trade deadline when they make the move for Kevin Durant, what was the number one thing that we talked about? Okay, well, you traded away your defenders to get him. You traded away a lot of depth to get him. When you got into the postseason, that is what hurt you. You had no real way to stop anything Denver was doing. Now, granted, 
clearly no one was able to stop what Denver was, was doing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but even if we look back to that, you know, the Clippers series, the Clippers, even without Kawhi, were giving them some level of fits. And when Kawhi was there, they were able to get a game. Um, so I still think there's a lot of issues there on the defensive end that, like you said, this does not address. Obviously, they have young guys on the roster. Like, they secretly got Darius Baisley last year, didn't play at all for them, I think. But, you know, he showed flashes in Oklahoma City of being a very versatile and capable defender, very athletic. Um, You know, Jonathan Goodwin is a very quality point of attack defender, someone they got back in this trade. Again, those are – Good pieces to add, but there's still too many glaring holes from a complete roster perspective. When I know we've talked about on this podcast a ton of times, the teams that have been competing most consistently, you know, year in and year out for the last few years are teams that were built together over long periods of time. They're not cashing in their chips and going and get, you know, multiple superstars and, you know, leveraging the entirety of their bench to get them. They build quality benches. They have great role players. Everyone fits what they're trying to do, and that's when they find success. The most recent iterations of these conglomerate of superstars putting together, you know, top-end talent and just saying, well, we'll just force our hand that way has not looked as good in recent years. Obviously, injuries play a factor into that, but you've said this a ton. When you go that top-heavy, it makes it that much harder to win when you lose one guy. Mm -hmm. Cause then there's not the, the gap between your best players and your role players is significantly greater. So losing one guy hurts you that much more versus if you have a more cohesive roster, obviously it's still going to hurt, but not to that same extent. So Mm -hmm. with that in mind, I've thought about it a ton. I don't feel like this trade moves the needle a ton for me for how I view Phoenix in terms of legitimate title contention. Obviously with that level of talent, you're always going to be a very good regular season team. You're always going to be in the mix, but in terms of legitimate title contenders, I don't feel like that's changed my opinion on Phoenix at all. I still have the same questions and issues. The caveat of that being they didn't have to give up DeAndre Aiden in this trade which is in and of itself crazy. But again, when you have a no trade clause, you kind of can make the package. Right. So I would, I'd be hard pressed to say that the Wizards didn't want DeAndre and I know that they did, but I'm sure Bradley Beal wanted to play with as much talent in Phoenix as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that in mind, that then gives the Suns leverage to say, we can then move a to get some of those quality role players, to kind of fill out the rotation. Then it's like if you have John, or Jonathan Goodwin, Darius Baisley step up and they kind of can become quality role players. You get Torrey Craig back, you might be able to get Josh Kogi back. This is a, that then moves the needle for me. But that's all TBD on what happens with DeAndre Ayton, what they're able to get back for him. If they right. do end up moving him, which I think all signs point to, they are and they should. <laughs> I think that mm-hmm. that has really run its course there. But if they're able to do that, to me, Phoenix becomes significantly more dangerous, which is, I think, weird to say when, you know, you, adding Bradley Beal doesn't, you know, check that box. But it's just the holes in this roster, to me, are not solved by just saying, well, we'll just add more and more and more firepower. Because that's great. But in the playoffs, it's very specific things that you're going to be asked to defend on a nightly basis. Teams are going to consistently throw things at you until they realize that you can't stop it. And if you aren't able to stop it, you will lose the series. I think Mm -hmm. when we look at back at the finals, right, when we go to that, when we go to game three and you look at the Jamal Murray Jokic pick and roll, that was the most screens in game three that Jokic had set for Jamal Murray the entire season. They just were spamming ball screen action between the two of them. And Miami didn't have an answer to it. 
Miami didn't get another game after that point because they had no answer to stop one very specific action. Right. You do not have capable defenders in a capable defense. You don't have great rim protection. These are things that are going to get exploited by other top level teams in the West. So right now, if they ran that series back, still would think Denver would beat Phoenix, even with Bradley Beal. I don't think mm-hmm. offense was the issue. No, one hundred percent. Um, my the thing with Aiden, I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like I don't think that they like sh- like. I think they have to trade DeAndre Aiden. That's what I'm saying. Like it's not like a. I've seen takes like, oh, they can look for trade for DeAndre Aiden. If not, they can just keep him. I feel like with this move. You one hundred percent have to trade DeAndre Ayton. Like I don't. I think you're even worse. It's weird as it sounds. I think you're even worse if you keep DeAndre Ayton rather than trade him for players that are probably lesser of a talent, but can fill out the the roster a little bit more, mm-hmm. and give you something that you actually could use that can help your team. Because you don't need the eighteen points per game that DeAndre Ayton is going to give you. You don't. You have Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, KD. You don't need any more scoring on this team in general. Like you're fine as far as scoring. You've talked about this plenty of times without Chris Paul there. His offense drops off anyways because Chris Paul really elevates his offensive game. Mm-hmm. And the type of center DeAndre Ayton is, he's not going to give you what I feel like the Suns need. Like, I would like this Suns team a lot better if they had, like, a Mitchell Robinson, Kavon Looney, Rob, like, the, those type of gritty, I'm going to I'm gonna hustle, I'm going to play defense, I'm going to get rebounds type of center rather than DeAndre Ayton. So, in my opinion, I feel like they 100% have to trade DeAndre Ayton, like, I hate this move if they don't trade DeAndre Ayton. And that's why I'm I'm holding out my, like, as of right now, I don't really like the way this team is built, but I'm holding out hope for them that they're going to find a package out there that can give them something that they really need. But also I feel like after this playoff run, after DeAndre Ayton struggles, after his even, like, off-the-court stuff, like getting get into it with Monty Williams, it's like, what is his trade value right now? Because I've seen people say, like, oh, yeah, they could just flip DeAndre Ayton for – quality role players two three quality role players but it's like what package out there what what package is out there for you deandre ayton that has that's going to give you all of those pieces after the bad playoffs that he just had he's on and a he's, max deal too exactly he's on a max deal getting getting paid like one of the top what three centers in the league and is playing less than an all-star caliber player right now so i mean i don't really know what package is out there for him but I would need to see it first to really have my full full assessment on the Suns team. Yeah, I think what you said about the type of center that the that that the Suns want to play with, a guy like Mitchell Robinson or Nick Claxton, someone that does not need post touches. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like their offense vibes when he has to slow it down and get the ball on a low block touch to do this turnaround float shot. Um, like you said, without Chris Paul, his production to me drops off significantly. And I just don't know, like you said, what, what the trade market is for a max contract guy who is not playing remotely close to up to that level, is not in all-star conversations at all as mm-hmm. a, a former number one overall pick. Um, I think, it, again, like you said, it would be a great – Better for both parties, right? I think the Suns would get better if they can trade him and get any type of quality pieces back. And I think it's better for DeAndre Ayton to just go and get a fresh start, new change of scenery. Right. Um, so that how this trade is really going to be viewed is all contingent on what they do in the free agency, what they do in free agency and what they do with DeAndre Ayton. Um, because they have to make this roster more cohesive. Now, again – It'll be better that, you know, they're gonna they got a new coach. You know, I still don't think Monty getting rid of Monty was the right decision, but they have Frank Vogel now. He's gonna get a full off season. Um, Kevin Durant is gonna get a full off season there in Phoenix to you know really gel with everyone instead of kind of being thrown in at last second and got hurt, so didn't really have any time before the playoffs really to to play with those guys in Phoenix. So all of those things are factors, but like you said everything is really hinging on what they do in free agency and what they do with DeAndre Ayton. So um, still TBD on how this trade is really going to play out. But as it stands today, June 21st, this did not move the needle that much for me. And it's like, even if they trade DeAndre Ayton, you have, 
I'd say what are their, their biggest problems? Defense, depth. They trade DeAndre and they're gonna need bigs. And they still don't they don't have a point guard. Is Devin Booker gonna play point guard for them? I, I, I think that that's the thought process, right? Is you put D book at the one and uh play Bill at the two and just let him be the lead facilitator, offensive creator for that team. But you're taking away from his biggest strength, which is scoring. It's like I don't I don't know. To me, it it just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense because even if I like, I understand Booger played well um in those games in the playoffs that Chris Paul missed. Like he played well running the point, still taking the offense, but I his biggest strength is scoring to me. Like I don't, I wouldn't want to stray away from that if I'm the Phoenix Sun. So to me, that doesn't make sense, and that leaves more questions: Are they going to go out there and try to get a point guard? They need defense, so are they going to are they going to go out there and try to get a wing that can play defense? They're going to need big. It's like. Even if they find a package for Aiton for two, three players, I feel like it's going to be rare that they're going to find two, three players that address all of those needs, in my opinion. Yeah, they have they have a lot of work to do. So um, to be, like I said, they're already going to be a top, you know, they were top four seed in the West this year. Mm-hmm. They're going to be a top four, three seed in the West. They're going to be a great regular season team. Oh, yeah. They're going to win a lot of games. All right. My issue is going to come in the playoffs when teams are going to really look to exploit the weaknesses on that roster. And if they don't patch them up now, they're going to get exposed. And I do not see this Phoenix team making it out of the West unless no. they address those, those needs. But Do you, do you think they're uh, – would you say they're a top four team in the league? I've seen, like, because I feel like with this trade, you're either on the, I love it, they're the best team in the league, or you're, like, kind of like us, a little bit skeptical and need to see what they're going to do with the roster. When I think about the top teams in the league, I look at Denver, I look at Milwaukee, I look at Boston. You could maybe convince me that they're four. um, Mm Mm-hmm. But then again, I, I that is contingent on I think what some of these other teams are able to do in terms of you know shuffling pieces around. Um, like what does what does Miami do? Are they able to land a, a, a star there to move Jimmy to being a second option? Right. Um, you know what is um, team like Philly going to do in this off season? Um, so I, they're around that mark either way. So I can mm-hmm. see that, but to me, they are still a notch below teams like the Nuggets or the Celtics or the Bucks, just in terms of how I feel like their roster is constructed um, and what that allows them to do in the playoffs. The Suns are very limited to just like we have a three-headed monster in Durant, Beal, and Booker. Can you stop that? Yeah. And if you can, well, what do they do? They don't have any other options. They don't have a way to throw a lot of dif- different defensive coverages. Unless Frank Vogel, known for being a defensive coach, steps these guys' level of play. And if he does, credit to him. We are both just skeptical.